Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Almighty God, that this morning, your word will touch your people, elevate your people, encourage your people, deliver those who need deliverance in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Today is going to be a great day. Today is going to be a wonderful day. Today is going to be an awesome day in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, O God, that you will cause your words to enter our hearts and cause a transformation at the cellular level in the name of Jesus. May we be doers of the word and not just hearers only. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about 10 keys to a fruitful life. 10 keys to a fruitful life. Now, remember last week I told you that I had a dream and in that dream God showed me a tree and the tree was magnificent and beautiful. The leaves of the tree were evergreen. You know, it was a wonderful sight to behold. And as I looked at the tree, my eyes were drawn to the stem and to the trunk and I could see it was almost like I could see inside the tree and I could I could see down to the root and the roots of that the roots of that tree taper into the rivers of water at the bottom. And when I began to ponder what made this tree so magnificent, the spirit of the Lord told me is because the tree was connected to its source. And it says something profound that I think is worth repeating for all of us to hear. God says to me, everything connected to its source will always be fruitful. Everything connected to its source will always be fruitful. Now, we see that statement is true because when we look at the life of Adam, Adam in the book of Genesis, Adam was a first man that was made by God and Adam was fruitful. How do I know that? Because in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 to 20, the Bible says that Adam was the one that named all the animals. Adam lived under the understanding of the authority that God had given him. It was because Adam was connected to Esau. That's the reason why he was able to name all the animals. Anything that is taken out of its source starts to what? To degenerate. So this statement that God made about everything connected to its source, we continue to grow, is a statement that is important for all of us to understand and to appreciate. So Adam, when he was connected to God, when he hadn't sinned, what happened? He could demonstrate the authority that God had given him on the earth. He named all the animals. As a matter of fact, Adam was the one that named the woman woman, and also he was the one that named Eve Eve. The name Eve was given by Adam to Eve. It wasn't God that gave Eve the name Eve to Eve. All right. So that tells you about the power of the word that humans possessed before the fall. Adam was connected to his source, to God as his source, and therefore he was able to demonstrate the God factor upon the earth. God said to me, everything connected to its source, we continue to grow. We will be fruitful. So, before I keep, before I go down the path of running through the 10 keys that I learned, that are required or that are um, important for us to understand in order for us to grow, in order for us to be fruitful, it's important to understand that fundamentally being rooted in our source with who is God, being rooted and aligning ourselves allow us allow ourselves to know that God is our source 
and carrying that consciousness that God is our source is really, really the fundamental prerequisite for fruitfulness. Everything connected to its source will always be fruitful. Everything connected to its source will always be fruitful. So, when as I looked at this tree and I was so mesmerized by the beauty of this tree, God began to teach me how the tree can be likened to the human being. And towards the end of that ministration with God, as God was teaching me this stuff, the scripture that popped into my mind is what I will display on the screen. So I'm going to be teaching from Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3. And I will expand onto that to go at other things that God has taught me over these um, weeks to kind of show you why and why it is important for us as, as collectively as, uh, as and individually to begin to grow in this area so that we can be, bring much more fruit into the kingdom. Now remember, your fruitfulness in the kingdom is not a sign of your sonship. Sonship precedes uh, fruitfulness. What does that mean? It means that you as a child of God, because you have been brought into the kingdom of God, uh, by nature, you have the fruitful nature. What we're talking about here are the things that you need to develop in. You need to understand the different kind of journey that God takes you through to become much more fruitful. Okay. So in John chapter 15, verses 7 to 8, Jesus Christ says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you will, and my Father will do it for you, or it will be granted unto you. And then the next verse then says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So, here we see, the first thing that Jesus was alluding to was, Abide in me, my words abide in you. Now, the Bible says in the book of Romans, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Jesus, is none of his, which means the only way for you to say you are born again is if you have the spirit of Jesus. So if you have ever given your life to Jesus, you do have the spirit of Jesus. If you do have the spirit of Jesus, it means that you are united together with Jesus. Unity with Jesus means you are one and the same in the realm of the spirit. So God gave you the spirit of Jesus. So the spirit that lives on the inside of you is the exact same spirit that is in Jesus today. So you are one into Christ and Christ is into you. You have become indissoluble. You have become indivisible with the Godhead. That's who you are. Okay. But it then says, let my words abide in you. The word of God abiding in us is the word has taken root in our hearts. And this is where most of us fail or most of us fall out because we haven't spent time to allow the word of God to grow deep into our heart, to form the root into the depth of our heart to the point where when challenges of life comes, challenges of life come, we will know that the root of the word that we have planted in our heart will rise up from within us to help us to know what to say and how to act. Jesus Christ said, Abide in me and let my words abide in you. Then you are going to ask what you will and it will be done unto you. So when you abide in him, which you, we all abide in Jesus because, because we are born again, because we have given our lives to Jesus. If you have ever given your life to Jesus, you are born again, you are already abiding in Christ. But for his words to abide in you, there is a process. The process goes this way. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Which means for your faith to grow, your faith um, has to grow the more you hear the word of God. The more you hear the word of God, the more the word of God paints pictures in your heart. The more pictures are painted in your heart of the word of God the more it will come out of your mouth. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So when the mouth speaks of the abundance of what is in the heart, in this case, it is the predominant word of God that you have been hearing. Your mouth will not speak what? Will speak out the word of God. All right. Now remember, the word of God is likened to a seed. 
And the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that every seed produces after its kind. So as you release the word of God out of your mouth, this word of God now will produce after what? After its kind. What is the kind of the word of God? Is the God kind. So the word of God that you have released now will produce after the God kind in your life. Now as you release these words that, that are actually seeds, and these words will then ultimately produce after what? After their kind. As the words produce after their kind, then you will bear much fruit. Right? Because the words will keep producing and producing and producing. Because the Bible teaches us that the word of God is like a, 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 a seed that is planted in the ground that then turned to become a mighty tree and all the birds of the earth came to rest on it. Which means the word of God, no matter how small it is, if you can persist in speaking about it, in thinking about it, in meditating about it, in allowing it to saturate your heart, it will ultimately, eventually, grow big into in your life to produce the results of the words that you have been speaking out of your mouth. All right. So the foundation first is to understand that you are in Christ, that Christ is your source, that anything that is taken outside of His source will not be fruitful. So in the picture, in the dream that God showed me, as I began to you know on listen to him and as he began to teach me this stuff i realized that there's a scripture in psalm 1 as 1 to 3 that that actually describes the tree properly let's go to psalm 1 verses 1 to 3 the bible here says blessed happy fortunate prosperous and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly following their advice their plans and their purposes no stands that is submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather but his delight and desire are in the law of the lord and on his law the precepts the instructions the teachings of god he habitually keyword habitually meditates ponders and studies by day and by night and then this person shall be like a tree, firmly planted and tended by the streams of water, ready to bring forth its fruits in its season. Its leaf also shall not fade or wither, and everything it does shall prosper and come to maturity. So the picture that God showed me is a picture of this tree that is tended or planted and tended by the rivers of by the streams of water or by the rivers of water. But the question that you must ask is the question is what makes this tree to be fruitful the answer is in the text it says because it is planted and tended by the streams of water now the question now that might come to your mind is what is this stream of water what is this stream well, say streams of water okay so what are these streams of water if you stay with me for a moment, I'm going to get back to these streams of water to explain to you what the water means. Because the water really is the word of God. But I'll get back in a moment. But the Bible says this tree is firmly planted and tended by the streams of water. And because it is the it is tended, it's planted by the streams of water, it brings forth its fruits in its season. So being planted by the streams of water, being tended by the streams of water is very crucial to the fruitfulness. Of the seed in order for the tree to be planted and to be to be fruitful it has to without fail be planted and be tended by the streams of water now if you disperse the seed on the ground the seed of any tree disperse on the ground you know the ground by nature we exert pressure on the seed to produce when you when you scatter seeds on the ground or you, you dig up the earth and you, you put your seed in the ground. The ground by design is designed to exert pressure on that seed. Why? So that the seed can, um, can crack and bring out its life to grow out of the ground into the earth, into, 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 out of the ground, out for everybody to see. So, the extent of growth is tied to how connected this, 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 the seed is to the streams of the water beneath. Let me explain that again. If you take the same seed, the same seed, and you take that seed into a ground that is connected to a riverbed that has a lot of water, and you take that same, that same seed, you take it to another 
part of the world that's when you plant it in a ground that is not connected to the streams of water the ground on both parts of the world where these seeds are planted we do the same thing the ground we exert pressure on the seed that you have planted to do what the purpose of the pressure on the seed is for the seed to bring out what the best of itself to bring out the best of itself so that what so that it can germinate and bring forth fruit the reason why this ground must do its work is because the ground must perform its function what is the function of the ground the function of the ground is to exert pressure on the seed so that the seed can bring forth fruit that's the purpose but if you take one seed and you plant it in a ground that is connected to some sort of moisture being it it's connected to the riverbed beneath 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 and you have another seed planted in another part of the world where it is connected to uh, uh it's not connected to the river bread is riverbed is in it in a land that is that is um that has no rain you know like a land filled with drought right the growth of the seeds to turn into fruit will be different and that tells us one thing the ground will do its job but the fruitfulness of the seed is dependent on the connection of the ground on which the seed is planted to the river bed below and that's what god was trying to show me god will show me the fact that our fruitfulness in the kingdom our fruitfulness in life is dependent on how connected we are to what the streams of water the streams of water beneath this beneath the ground in which we are planted so that we can bring forth fruits in season let me explain this to you again you are a child of god you are like that tree as a child of god you are already planted right but if you don't allow those streams of the water of the word of god to fill your heart the, the, your heart in this case is like the ground on which the seed is planted you are like that seed now planted in the ground right the, which means the word of god comes to, into your heart your heart is your heart is the ground but if that your heart is not connected deeply to the word of god which is now the the the, 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 um, the streams of water here your growth will be limited your fruitfulness will be limited so if you want to be fruitful in the kingdom of god you must prioritize the study of your word of the word of god you must prioritize you know the study of the word not just study be in, in this text here in psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 we saw that it says that you must meditate that is ponders you must ponder and you must study so meditate means to ponder and to study which means you look at the word and ask a question what is he really saying here when you do study you find out the meaning of the words you are reading what does it really mean what is the context behind behind these words that i'm reading what does he what is he saying in light of what i know in light of the fact that christ died and it's not risen for us what does this text now mean when you start to ask those questions you are studying the word when you begin to ponder it in your heart you 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 ruminate over it you think about it over and over and over what are you doing you are working on that seed you are trying to break the shell of that seed so that the fruits can come out amen so now now that we've settled that understanding now let's go into uh, the ten keys. There are ten keys, right? There are ten keys that God has shown me that uh, the seed in the ground must go through in order for the seed to become the fruit or to become the tree that will then produce the fruit. In order for you to be fruitful, remember you must be seedful. And remember, I said last week that you are already seedful. Why do I know that? Because God has placed the seed of greatness on the inside of you. So in order for the seed of greatness that God has placed on the inside of you to become a tree of greatness, to then produce fruits of greatness, there are 10 keys that I wanted to go, go through today to talk about. Number one, the environment. Okay, so at this point in time, I want my team to bring up a short video, so a like one minute video that I found on YouTube that we will use to explain these keys over the next half an hour. Now, this video explains uh the seed of zucchini i think it was zucchini tree that was planted in the ground it shows you how the zucchini seed uh, becomes a plant all right so we're going to look at that in one minute and then we'll be back
after looking at this video, the first key that I want to call out is the environment. The seed must be planted in an environment that allows it to be fruitful. If you take a seed now, and you go and take the seed that naturally is not adaptable to an arid region, you take that seed and you go and plant it in an arid region, that seed will never produce fruit. So there are some seeds, there are some, sorry, there are some seeds of trees that are adaptable to arid region, places, places where there's no rain, there's no water. You know, those, those trees actually thrive in that area because they, by nature they were designed like that. But if you take a, a seed of any tree that is meant to thrive in an environment like, like where they need to have access to sunlight and, sun, and water and all that, and you go and put them in another environment, it, that seed will not thrive. That seed will not become fruitful. So the first thing that we saw in the video is that you take the seed and you plant it under the ground. You dig a hole, you plant it under the ground, and you cover it all up, right? That seed is planted in an environment for it to what? To grow. You must plant yourself in an environment that will foster your growth, that will foster your fruitfulness. You must ensure that you listen to messages that build you up, that build up self-worth in you, that build up uh, your, your worth in Christ. You must ensure that you listen to messages that uh, you know build you up. You must listen to conversations that build up your self-worth. If you have friends and and relationships that you hang out with and they are always beating you down, saying bad things about your life, then you are in the wrong environment. I believe I mentioned this last week. What you must do, what you must do is get out of that environment. If you find yourself in the wrong environment, you cannot thrive. It's like if you are in a relationship, marital relationship, and your spouse is always abusing you and molesting you and speaking negative words over your life. That is not a congenial environment for you to thrive. That person is going to push you back so much that your growth will be stunted. And you cannot be fruitful in an environment that is that is filled with strife. I said that like last week or two weeks ago. I said, James 3.16, the Bible says, where there's envy or strife, there's all manner of evil work. All right. So, the first key to fruitfulness is to be planted in an environment that fosters fruitfulness. You must do all you can to ensure that you are in an environment that will make you to be fruitful. Make sure you surround yourself with friends that want you to grow, that want you to succeed, that want your life to be better than what it is. Make sure that you are in an environment that fosters your ability to be better than what you are now. Don't hang out with people that have that are not going anywhere. Don't spend your time lazing around with people that have no pathway. They have no vision for their lives. Now I'm talking to you, young ladies now, young boys now. You are in a season where maybe you are dating and all that kind of stuff. And the guy or the girl comes around and say, "Hey man, what's up? How I like you? What's up? How you doing? How's all is well?" And they start all this nice way of speaking, which is all, which is all right. The question you should ask is, "What is your vision for the future?" If that guy or the girl has no vision, has no dream, has no pathway, then you have no business hanging out with such a person. Remember, you are so precious to God that you have no business wasting your time hanging out with people that are not going anywhere. So the first key to fruitfulness is to be planted in an environment, right? That fosters your growth. An environment that fosters your growth. Number two, we see this seed again. When the ground was When the hole was dug up in the ground, or the earth was, the hole was dug up in the the, the earth, what happens? A hole was formed in the ground, right? And we put the seed in the ground, and we cover it up with the earth. And I've often wondered, I've often wondered, you know, what happens to the tree, uh, to the seed, when it is buried in the belly of the earth? I've wondered this at times. You know, I, I, my imagination starts to go like, well, what's happening? Of course, the seed is alone. The seed is alone in the ground by itself. The key point number two to fruitfulness is learn to be alone, but don't be lonely. 
Two different things. Don't be lonely, but learn to be alone. I say this from time to time. If you think about the seed in the ground, it is dark. It is not recorded that when you plant, you, when, you, when you dug up the earth and you plant the seed there, that there's any light there. It is dark. Growth happens in darkness. Growth happens in darkness. If you are following a crowd of people that are not going anywhere, you all hang out the same way, you do, the, you do everything the same way, there's no challenge, there's no pathway forward, you can be rest assured, nothing is going to happen in that life. But the moment you decide to say, I want to do something great with my life, I am meant for more, I am meant to be more, to do more, to have more, what will happen is some of your friends will start to hate on you. They start to say to you, who do you think you are? Where do you think you are going? They start to say things or do things that will make you to feel like you've made the wrong choice. Have you ever heard about the herd effect? H-E-R-D. The herd effect essentially is this. A pack of animals going together in a group is called a herd. Everybody is trying to go in the same direction. If one animal desires or seeks to break away from the herd, the others will pull that animal back. Why? Misery loves company. <laughs> Misery loves company. So, so when people are not doing great with their lives, they feel like you are leaving them behind the moment you try to do something great with your own life. Maybe they are envious of you. I don't know, but they try to they try to find some complaint about you. So look at what this person did and all that kind of stuff. You need to learn to be alone. It's not everybody that is worth your time. It's not everybody that is worth your presence. You don't need to have to be everywhere. You know, they have a party there, you have to go there. They have a party there, you have to go. Don't you have work to do? Don't you have a, a vision to pursue? You must ask yourself the question. This place that I'm going, or this way that I'm hanging out with, in which way is it adding value to my life? It's not adding value to your life, cut it off. You need to learn to be alone. Everyone who has achieved greatness, greatness in this life received the vision when they were alone first. You must be comfortable to be alone by yourself to build up the vision that God has placed in your heart. Later in this, in this uh, teaching, I will show you why you need other people, right? But the, in the beginning, the vision must be given alone. When Moses was on the mountain, book of Exodus, when he was called, he was alone by himself. He had to go through that experience by himself. And the Lord called him and said, Moses, Moses, the land on which you stand is a, is a holy ground. Remove your shoes. And God gave him an instruction for his life. Was he given in the crowd? No, he was alone. It was alone. When Solomon, the greatest king, well, the wealthiest king in the world, or the, and in recorded history, when he had an encounter with God and God gave him the wisdom that he had, was there any crowd there? No. The Bible says that after Solomon had offered his burnt offerings, thousands of burnt offerings he offered, God showed up in the night and said to him, Ask of me what I must give you. It was alone. When God called Abraham, and God showed up to Abraham to renew covenant with Abraham, was there a crowd there? No, it was alone. I hope you're seeing the pattern. Being alone is crucial to your fruitfulness. In this coming year, don't hang out with everybody. Don't just say, I have to be everywhere. Don't find some time to be away from social media. At that time, you need some downtime alone to, to go back into yourself and recalibrate your own life. So key number two is learn to be alone. The seed was alone in the ground. I'm not saying be lonely. God did not put us on the earth to be lonely. Just we live life by ourselves. There's no family. There's no community. No. You need community. But in terms of shaping your vision, embracing your vision, understanding where you're going, you know, for it, you know the seed has to be alone. You have to be alone to find out your weaknesses, your, your strength, the things that you're good at. You have to be alone to find that out. Alone to own yourself. Own your own identity. Alone. Then before you can then begin to say, okay, I want to serve this gift that God has given me for the world to have.
to share in it. Amen? Okay, point number three. Point number three. Self-discipline. Self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to cut off distractions. To cut off distractions. There are so many distractions in this world today. So many. When you wake up in the morning, you have the news feed feeding you with what? All sort of stuff. And if you live your life, your life being fed by the news feed, what will happen is you are going to be so exasperated and so distracted and so stressed out. You think nothing's going to work. Remember, the purpose of the news media is to promote largely the agenda of the devil. I know some of people, some people might not agree with me, it's okay. You know, but if you think about the news, if you watch the news, you do an assessment this week. Watch the news. Out of your 10 hours, let's say you have 7 or 8 hours to, in the day. Watch the news for 2 hours every single day. Notice how you feel. Notice your perception to life. Notice how the way you speak at the end of that week. The second week, turn up the news. Or maybe reduce it to maybe 10 minutes sound bite headline only notice how you feel or notice your perception to life i guarantee you when you do it the first time you become fearful and negative and exasperated you think that the resources of this world is not enough uh, are not enough that things are going out that there's so much lack and scarcity in the world but if you spend time when you shift your attention from the news media and spend time in the world and look at the promises of god your heart will begin to grow bigger listen the Natural realities of the world has not, have not changed. But what has changed is your perception, is your focal point, is what you focus on. So, key number three is about self-discipline. Being able to put yourself and discipline yourself to be able to do the right thing at the right time. We all need this. In different areas of life, there might be areas of life where you need some support, where you need to have more self-discipline. You need the seed in the ground could not turn to become a tree that produced the fruit unless that seed, even though being alone, began the process of holding itself, thinking about how to pull out to pull off the nutrients in the ground to itself so that it can grow. You need to have self-discipline. All right, number four, key number four, germinate. Germinate, germinate, the word germinate means to grow and to put out shoots after a period of dormancy. Of a seed or spore to grow and put out shoots after a period of dormancy. Now, there's a word there called dormancy. Dormancy means when nothing is happening. So this is a crucial period, right? You have found a congenial environment that will foster your growth. You are planted in that environment. Yeah? You have begun to work on yourself, being alone, building your vision, thinking about it, meditating upon it. Yeah. And then you have begun to exercise self-discipline. You know, maybe you plan your day out ahead of time maybe you are in the habit of going late to school or going late to work you plan your day out the day before you are disciplined yourself you're putting things in place right but you may not see result immediately you may not see result immediately you know there's a saying that says um it is darkest before the dawn and before the day breaks it's darkest which means things might look as if they are not going to work all of a sudden boom things will just change that period is called a period of dormancy you cannot see anything going on on the outside. But things are going on in the, on the inside. It's just that like you don't know about it. So before the seed began to germinate, began to bring out shoots, or began to sprout, nothing seemed to be happening in the beginning. Nothing seemed to be happening in the beginning. But when the time of germination starts to come, what, what do we see? The first thing we see, we saw in the video is that the root of that something came out of the seed, and it was the root 
that began to go down first. The root must go down first before the plant can go up. And that's a statement that I'm, you probably want to write down. The root must go down first before the plant can go up. It's like when you're building a house. The foundation of the house must, be go, must go down first before the edifice can rise up. So, I, I, I watched a documentary when they were building the Burj Khalifa in, in Dubai. I understand that they built the foundation to go deep, deep, deep down into the belly of the ocean. They spent a lot of time building that foundation before they start to say, okay, that's, let's put on this, I don't know how many, how many, maybe 100, I don't know how many story, stories, story building they have in there. But, how many floors, sorry, they have in that building. But they built the foundation first. They spent months and months and months to build the foundation and certify the foundation before it begins to grow up. So when it's time to germinate, it is time for you to sprout, to, to board, right? You have been alone. But the first thing that must happen is before germination can happen, right? Your root must go down, deep down into what? The riverbed. And then the plant can then go up. So the key thing to know here under germination is germination is a process by which when you are alone and you have exercised self-discipline and you are in the right kind of environment, germination is a process whereby you are now beginning to attract the right people to yourself, the right resource to yourself in that process where you are. But in order for that to happen, your root must go down so that the plant can go up. Key number five, water. The seed needs water. The seed needs water in order for it to grow. Now, you remember in the, in the last key around germination, the root goes down, down into the riverbed before the plant can go up. Okay. The root going down is your heart going deep down into the word of God. The word of God is the water in this case. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse 26, that it might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. The washing of the water by the word. God washes us and cleanses us by what? By his word, by the word of God. So here, I wrote here, feed your mind with the word of God so that you can grow by the word because the word produces an image in you of itself. When you begin to ponder on the word of God, ponder on the truth of the word of God, what will happen? You, your life will begin to change to the image of the word of God. You begin to expand. Your mind will begin to expand. There may be challenges going on in the world, but your mind is rooted in Christ. Therefore, all you are going to be getting back from the word is the image of the word. And the image of the word is the image of Jesus. All you're going to be getting back is what? Is Jesus. You are getting Jesus Christ back into your situation. All right? So, therefore, you are not exasperated about what is going on in the world. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2 says, Like newborn babies, you should crave, you should, you should thirst for, earnestly desire for, the pure, unadulterated spiritual make. That is, you may be nurtured and grow unto completed salvation. The Bible says, you must desire this milk, this milk of the word of God. You must desire it. As part of your fruitfulness, you must make the study of the word of God number one in your life. Psalm 119 verse 24 says, Your testimonies are my delight. Your word, Lord, are my delight. Why? They are my counselors. Do you know that the word of God can counsel you? The word of God can counsel you on how to be a wonderful parent, on how to be a wonderful husband or a wonderful wife. The word of God can counsel you on how to be a, a wonderful child, you know, a, you know, a, a top-notch, you know, excellent child. The word of God can counsel you to do that. Yesterday in, 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 um, in the prayer meeting, I was sharing this book, Ephesians chapter 6, I think. I was sharing it with the, the, the people that I now say. The Bible says that fathers, do not exasperate your children, but bring them up in the instruction of the Lord. You know, and I'm saying that what God is saying here is that it is your responsibility as a father or as a mother to bring your, up your children in the instruction of the Lord. Teach them the Bible. Teach them the word. Spend time with them. Show them what God says about them. Let your child has his identity or identity based on what Christ has done. Your child should not draw identity from the word system. I know it's not easy. I know that, you know they go to school, sort of things happen. But don't be exasperated. Don't give up. Don't feel defeated. Oh, I, don't, I can't do this anymore. It's not working. No. God gave you those children for a reason. Right? So spend time with them. 
I have a timetable. Why you spend time with them? If you can't read the Bible with them, you know, regularly, just spend time with them. Maybe on Sunday like this, sit down together with them in, 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 in the service. Listen to what word of God. When you get home, ask a question. What did you learn today? What, what have you learned today? What does that mean for you? What are you going to use that to do in your life? The Bible says, teach a child in the way you should go. When that child grows up, he will not depart away from it. What that means essentially is form a child. When the child is still young, in the way that child will go, pattern their vision, their thought process are, are based on the word of God. When they grow up and all the influences of the word is coming to them, they will not depart from what? The image, the forming that they have been formed in the word of God. So God says here in key number five here is that the word of God is the water that the seed needs to grow. Psalm 1 verse 2 says, Talking about this man that's that, that's lacking to this tree that will prosper in all his way. The Bible says his delight and his desire is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he habitually meditates by day and night. You know, in Psalm 1, verse 3, the Bible says, This person shall be like a tree, firmly planted and tended by the streams of water, ready to bring forth its fruit in its season. Its leaves also shall not wither or fade, and everything it does shall prosper. The Bible says, essentially saying, there is someone here, whatever you do will prosper, but there's a condition. Condition says, your delight must be in the law of the Lord. Your delight must be in the law of the Lord. This is the word delight means something that brings happiness. What brings you happiness must be in what? In the word of God. Bible says, when you make the word of God your delight, and you habitually, constantly think, you constantly think about it in the morning, in the night, you ponder it, you meditate upon it. The Bible says, then you shall be like a tree that is firmly planted by what? The streams of water. The streams of water is what? The word of God. Then you are going to bring forth fruit in season. And that's why you, you should take this to heart. It does not matter what you do, really. Bible says, whatsoever you do, you shall prosper. If you make the word of God your number one and allow the word of God to guide you, to be your counselor, to teach you, to guide you, to help you, whatever you do will prosper. Why? Because the word of God will also show you the kind of business to to invest in and you're not going to lose money. You are going to prosper, prosper, prosper. It doesn't matter whether you're a teacher or a plumber or a carpenter or a doctor, whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, the Bible says you shall prosper. Why? You shall be like a man planted by the by the planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in season. His leaves shall not wither. But what is the condition for this man? Is planted why by the rivers of water. What was the precondition of that? This man is delight is in the law of the Lord. This the, the law of the Lord he habitually meditates on day and night. So, number five key, number fifth key, sorry, number five key rather to fruitfulness is what is. The word of God. Number six, fertilizers. A seed will need fertilizers. Fertilizers are concentrated sources of plant nutrient, usually in compact form, such as, such as pellets, granules, powders, or liquids. They are used to improve improve plant growth and yields. So, a fertilizer is the external support that you receive that further helps you in your growth journey. Now, this could be a word of encouragement. It could be an affirmative word. It could be a hug from somebody. It could be having a mentor. This is where, this is the opposite of being alone. So, now, the plant is beginning to germinate. Remember, the seed, the root of the seed goes down to the riverbed, gets nutrient from the riverbed, right? Now, it's about to grow up. As it's growing up, it needs fertilizers to to accelerate the growth. So, in order for you to accelerate your growth and your fruitfulness, you need support system. You need support system. You need people that, that believe in you, people that are all around you, people that can help you in the journey of life. Even Moses, as awesome as Moses was, Moses received help from Aaron because Moses was his, was his tamara. He could not speak very well. And Moses said, oh, this thing that you have given to me is too big for me. I cannot do it. God said to him, but I made your mouth. He said, yeah, but I cannot speak. God said, okay, I'm going to give you a help. And God sent his brother Aaron to him. Aaron was possibly an orator, can speak very well. So it was Aaron that God gave the, the ability to help Moses. But Moses was the one that God gave the vision to. Moses was still the greatest, one of the greatest leaders that Israel ever had, but he, he had 
Aaron has support system. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that in any area where you are lacking, where you need help to allow you to accentuate uh, and actualize your dream and your goal and your vision for your life. I pray for you right now that the Almighty God will send help to you. God will send quote and unquote fertilizers to you to help you and accelerate your growth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, fertilizers are uh, growth enablers. Fertilizers are growth enablers. We know the story about Joshua. Joshua was the one that took over from Moses. The Bible says when they were fighting the battle of Am- with the Amalekite, that Moses was standing, was sitting on the on the on the hill, and he was raising up his hand. And as long as Moses' hands were raised up with the rod of God, the Israelite prevailed in the, in the in the war in the battle. The Bible says, but it came to a point that Moses' hands were weak, and when his hands come down, the enemies prevailed against the Israelites. Guess what eventually happened? The Bible says there was a man named Hur, H-U-R, and there was another man named Aaron, right? They came on both sides of Moses and they held up both of his hands. So that what? The Israelite, Joshua who was the one leading the battle in the front can prevail over the enemy. You know what that means? It means that God is able to send destiny helpers to you. I pray for you that God will send destiny helpers to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to accelerate your fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Key number seven sunshine the work of the sun is to bring illumination illumination the every plant i mean some of you there's no way i believe you wouldn't you wouldn't have learned about photosynthesis right you know so you have a uh, a plant you put it in the room and then you know the, you put it close to a place where the sun can come through the the plant is eventually gravitates towards the direction where the sun is coming from that's photosynthesis photosynthesis is talking about the the effect of the sunlight on the growth of the plant and that's my prayer for you illumination the key to fruitfulness is illumination by the holy spirit this point is so important that i want us to pray i want you to pray right now say father in the name of jesus illuminate my heart and my mind by your holy spirit Help me to listen when he speaks. Help me to have direction in the areas where I don't know. Lord, shine your light on my path. Shine your light on my path. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Lord, this morning I pray for your light to touch my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in any area where my eyes are closed, where I don't understand, where I'm confused, I'm going around in a circle. Lord, today I pray and I receive the help of the Holy Ghost to know what to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Since every seed needs the sun to grow you need the help of the holy spirit to shine light on your pathways so that you don't walk in darkness there's a scripture a prayer in book of ephesians you know i would get the guys to put it and be, be uh, after this after this, this um this session for you to 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 take away he says that the eyes of your understanding will be en- uh, enlightened or will be illuminated that's a very powerful prayer. The eyes of your understanding. There's that you have an eye, or you have eyes of understanding, eyes on the inside you know, that makes you understand what's going on in the world. The Bible says that eyes, the, those eyes should be enlightened, should be illuminated, and that is the work of the Holy Spirit. God brings revelation to you so that you can understand what what you, what you need to do at the right time. I pray for you that illumination for your vision, for your dream, for your goal will come to you in a different way. In the name of Jesus Christ, so that you will know what to do and you will do the right thing at the right time in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God forevermore. All right. Number eight. Number eight. I think I'm gonna stop here actually. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna start um this the three. I've got three more, three more um points to cover here, but I think it is I need to cover it properly. I don't want to rush it. So I'm gonna talk about key number keys number eight, nine, and ten next week. All right, because it's going to take us a bit of time and then we can wrap wrap it up. All right. So before we go, I just want you to understand that, that God has made you a winner and his seed is on the inside of you. These keys we're talking about, it's not a law. It's just something for us to pay attention to. So as we leave, I just want to say a word of prayer. I want to say a word of prayer for you. Please come again next week as I round up the three other keys, all right? Uh, because it's going to take us a bit of time. That's why I had to stop now, all right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your children. I pray, Almighty God, Lord, that uh, we will understand the truth behind this revelation that will put them to use. 
help us to go back and and, and watch this again and or, or embrace the idea that you're trying to communicate to us help us in every area without you you we cannot do anything anyway lord we receive your help in, in preponderant measure lord we thank you we give you praise in jesus name we pray we pray lord as we put these keys to use even as we go to the, go, as we all move towards the end of the year that lord these keys will work for us that our mindset will be open to understand what christ has done for us that almighty god will run the race set before us in ways that will set us apart we thank you almighty god that we are in the season of fruitfulness thank you almighty god help us to be help us to be more to do more and to have more to the glory of your name in jesus name we pray amen if you have not given your life to jesus i'll give you an opportunity now to make him your lord and savior the bible says with a heart Man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What do you have to do to become born again? You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the only Savior of the world. You have to believe that he died for you. You have to believe that he died as you. You have to believe that, you know, you were, you were lost on death row and he came and paid a price. If you believe that and you want to make him your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say these prayers with me. Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Receive me as your son or as your daughter in the name of Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying as me. Thank you for being my Lord and my Savior. I receive you now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you have said that, said those prayers and you believe in your heart, then the Bible says you are now a child of God. And I welcome you to the family of my father if you need any support please write to the church light at the lighthouse.org and we're going to be sure to reach out to you i would like to give you a book a call to sonship that you can read up about that talks to you about who you are now in christ it will be a blessing to you so please write to the church light at the lighthouse.org and we're going to ship that across to you all right until next time remember you're blessed and highly favored